Billy Luna. John Sonny Franzese, Cosa Nostra legend, committed his first murder and became a made member of the Mafia at the age of 14. Friend and confidant of Cosa Nostra superstars Albert Anastasia and Vito Genovese, rose to the rank of Colombo family underboss. Tough as nails, killer of more than 55 men, loving father, Ladies' man, underworld celebrity, mafia rock star, idol of John Gotti, betrayed by his own sons and sent to prison at the age of 93. He was there at the dawn of Cosa Nostra and lived to see its fall. Today's guest is S.J. Petty, Pulitzer Prize winning investigative journalist and author of the book Sonny. Last of the old time mafia bosses, John Sonny Franzese. Sammy decided to beat up a guy. They all um, beat him into the ground, kicking him in the head. He ripped him. And then Sammy urinated in his mouth. It wasn't enough to rip the man or the kid. He had to urinate in his mouth. That's that's pretty bad. John Gotti deeply admired Sonny Francis for his toughness. Years later, Sonny authorized a hit on John Gotti Jr. because he had been too public about the mafia. You say that I got interviews with Sonny. I did. I interviewed him six times, but he never even acknowledged the existence of the mafia. And at one point I asked him about Omerta, and this is a man who at the time was over 100 years old, and he was very sharp, very lucid, very smart, and suddenly he would pretend that he didn't know what Omerta was. That's one of the lines I love from your book. It's like, Omerta. So this is Sonny, Franzese. Omerta. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way of, that's a good imitation. That's how he sounded. Today's guest is S.J. Petty, a.k.a. Sandra Petty. She's an investigative reporter at Newsday. She's won numerous journalistic awards, including two New York Emmys. She was a finalist for little award you might have heard of called the Pulitzer Prize in Public Service. And she was part of a team that won a Pulitzer Prize, an esteemed journalist, investigative journalist. <laughs> She's taught journalism at Hofstra and Sunnybrook Universities. And it's these voluminous accolades that set her apart from many of the authors of, of books about Cosa Nostra. She has recently written a book called Sunny. Last of the old time mafia bosses, John Sonny Franzese. What sets her apart to me is her, you know, she is a real journalist. And I know that in this age of social media and many other things that that's kind of gotten lost, but I personally like the truth and I like facts. I'm a bit of a stickler. And this particular author can probably footnote every sentence of her book. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I'm very impressed with. I highly recommend that everyone pick up a copy of the print version of Sonny. I know, old school, a real book, but also pick up a copy of the audio version and listen to it because they are both excellent. Thank you for being with us, Sandra. It's a pleasure having you. Well, thank you so much, Billy. That's a great intro. I thought maybe we would start with a little tour around the Cosa Nostra bend, as it were. And maybe we could just play a little name game and you can, I'll throw out a name and then you can throw out, you know, some interesting anecdotes, stories that you've come across in your research. How's that sound? Sounds good. John Joseph Gotti. John Gotti. John Gotti deeply admired Sonny Francis for his toughness. More than one prosecutor on the New York State Organized uh, Crime Task Force 
listened to wiretaps and they told me, he said, Sonny Francis, he's one tough effing guy. He's a tough guy, really, really tough guy. Uh, so he deeply admired him. And then years later, Sonny authorized a hit on John Gotti Jr. because he had been too public about the mafia. Yeah, I believe I believe John Gotti Jr. You know, cooperated to some degree with the government. I think that's true. I'm not sure that I've seen that corroborated anywhere, but Sonny certainly believed it. Differences and similarities. Some similarities, I think, with this guy are his dapper style of dress at some points. I mean, in the beginning, I think it was not as much, but here you see probably a you know $1,000 Brioni suit custom tailored and Sonny had an amazing sense of style which we'll, we'll see a little bit later when we see some more photos of him and then uh the fact that he kept his mouth shut maybe not on wiretops you know but in general he was something of a stand-up guy got died You're in prison got yeah. yeah yeah so and then there's differences too well there are differences in that Gotti loved the spotlight and he courted it Sonny couldn't help but attract the spotlight and it worried him Sonny was not someone who flaunted his position. Gotti did. And Gotti was the kind of guy who made a lot of other bosses worried because he was too flashy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Interesting. Salvatore Sammy the Bull Gravano. Well, Sammy the Bull never came up in my conversations with Sonny Francis, but I did talk to an old friend of Sammy Gravano's a guy who was in his teenage gang in Bensonhurst. The gang was called the Rampers. And he told me a really chilling story that was never reported, but I believe it because he witnessed it. He said that when he was 15, he's part of this gang, and Sammy decided to beat up a guy. They all uh, beat him into the ground, kicking him in the head. He ripped him, and then Sammy urinated in his mouth wasn't enough to rape the man or the kid. He had to urinate in his mouth. That's that's pretty bad. It was a story that stayed with me for years. It's and pretty hardcore. And I, I, I know that I I'd mentioned that I, I'd heard that on uh, the Vlad, uh, Vlad was interviewing Sammy and he was talking about the murder of Frank Falia. And he had mentioned that and Sammy denied that. And I had not heard that related to the murder of Frank Falia. But that I'm wondering if that's not the same genesis. Frank Valia was murdered when he was uh, a man. This is this is a teenager. This is when wow. these guys were 15 year olds in Bensonhurst. And Cold my blooded. source that that's why uh, my source moved away. His mother wanted him away from these guys. Oh, and yeah, he said I get it, it saved his life. But I mean, I think there's got to be truth to it. The other thing I should say about Sammy is prosecutors told me he was a really smart guy. And that makes sense because you don't rise to the level of underboss or boss unless you're pretty smart. Now, a lot of the lower level guys are just there because they're there for muscle and they do work. And I, I, I know you know in the lexicon of the mafia, work is where you physically hurt or kill someone. And so there are a lot of guys who are not terribly evolved at that level, but to make it through the higher ranks, you've got to be pretty smart. And prosecutors told me Sammy is a smart, smart guy. Well, Sammy, you know, he always stated how Paul Castellano liked him because he was a gangster and a racketeer. And I mean, obviously Paul Castellano is more of a racketeer. And I mean, I think, you know, these guys, when you talk about, there's a big difference. There's such a a wide range, you know, and you've dealt with all of them. And, you know, you wrote a book about Sonny. Sonny is at a certain level. Sonny is a, a godfather. I mean, he's an underboss, but he really is a, a boss. And when you're in the administration of most of these companies, as, as you know, you know, uh, I think in your, in your research, you came across, across a uh, wiretap of Meyer Lansky with his wife in a hotel room watching TV. And he was watching something about U.S. Steel. And he turned to his wife and said, yeah, that's right. We're bigger than U.S. Steel. And then, of course, that line was co-opted for the movie The Godfather and the, from Mario Puzo. And, uh, you know, that's the truth. And so when you talk about guys that were at the administration level, you're talking about executives of multinational conglomerates. And exactly. it's not, not a lot of stupid guys, you know, they talk about the smartest man, the smartest guys in the room. And so I, I think that, like, generally speaking, there's probably some exceptions, but 
the top level administration guys are smart because lest we forget, there's not, you know, Arthur Anderson working. This is all mostly up here in the head. Right. So, I mean, right. it's all of that, but then it's kept in the head. That's like, you've got to be pretty smart. Yeah, I think so. Entire interview coming soon. Part two preview. When I was interviewing him, I said, Sonny, did you know Frank Sinatra? And he looked at me and he said, you asked the question the wrong way. The question should have been, did Frank Sinatra know Sonny Francis? <laughs> and that was Sonny. And he, he really was the dominant guy in that relationship. He met him in the rustic cabin when he was performing and a fight, which was in Inglewood Cliffs, New Jersey, a fight breaks out and Sonny jumped in to help him because Sinatra was a skinny kid in his view. And, and Sonny was a pretty good boxer and a very, very good fighter. So he, they became friends after that. He also described a pretty hot and heavy makeout session with Ava Gardner in a back room while Sinatra was performing on the stage of the Copacabana. We'll get more into that Ava Gardner makeout sesh backstage while Frank was actually on stage when we get into more of Sonny Franzese as the movie star rock star, because I'm, I'm kind of fascinated by it. And I mean, well, we'll talk about it later, but I, I had mentioned there's a lot of people that claim to have done this and claim to have done that with various women. And there's something about Sonny that I just simply believe. <laughs> it's like certain, certain, you know, gangsters and certain people say things and I just, eh, eh. but Sonny, I, I believe it. Tune in next week for part two. Billy Luna. This is Victoria Luna. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the videos, and share with your mates on social media. Check out these awesome videos now. Ciao.